For the next step on uh, the Coven Throne, I, I I think I have a few ideas of what we might do with this guy, I, I think. Um, I still don't entirely know what I'm going to do with every color. Um, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing, but <laughs> on all of it. Um, I'm going to kind of go uh, paint stuff as it goes. But I think the next thing we're going to do, uh, this episode, we're going to do two different things. Um, we use the warp lock bronze uh, on a lot of the brawn, on all the bronze sections here, on the armor, on the horses, and the weapons, and the shields. And even though I'm going to be putting a lot of color on this, I, I think that that's going to be muddied and a little bit hard to see. So what I'm going to do is take uh, a little bit of this hash net copper and go over those with that. And then the next thing I think I'm going to do is up here on the steps, I think I'm going to go over the whole thing uh, with just my natural gray color. Now, what, what I think I'm going to do, I, I think, uh, is go through here with natural gray, and then uh, I'm going to put some null oil on here, maybe some uh, some white dry brushing through here, try to make these the cracks and the steps stand out. And then I might come through here and paint these skulls and roses. Um, we'll see how that goes. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these pillows yet, and I'm not sure what colors I'm going to make uh, these up here. But for now... Uh, two steps this episode. Uh, we're going to add the copper color on top of all of the bronze. It actually works pretty well. This is a layer color. It, it, it sits right on top of that bronze really nicely. Uh, and then we're going to put some uh, some regular gray down there. Uh, again, normally I use a wet palette, but I'm working with metallics. So we're going to go ahead and use a, um, a regular cheap palette here. Give our paint a good shake as usual. Um, and you know, like I said, in every episode I've used a metallic, I don't water my metallics down with water. I like to water my metallics down with a thinner medium. Um, I've had better luck with that. That's not to say that that's everyone does it. Uh, I've seen people use water. That's fine. Just doesn't work for me as well. Um, teach his own. So be careful. Get about a drop in there. We go. Got a drop. All right. I will say I've I've kind of been thinking about this model for a day and trying to think of ways that I may make it look cool. Um, not entirely sure what we're going to do with everything. I want this to kind of be bright and kind of cool, but it is a death model, so I'm okay with it looking a little dark. Now, on here, you don't feel the need to perfectly cover this. It'll actually look kind of cool if we don't do this perfectly. Now, I'm probably going to take a silver color and go over this in little spots as well. But, you know, when we were working on the uh, some of the Space Wolves, I started taking the approach of not necessarily perfectly trying to paint layer colors. Now, part of it is because I'm not a great artist. Part of it is because it kind of ends up looking cool. It ends up having, um, I don't know, kind of an older, well-used look. Yeah, I'm definitely happier with this color. You can already see that standing out a little better. You know, we're probably going to weather it later and completely ruin it. But that's okay. You know, I remember when I was a kid and I used to watch Bob Ross. Um, and I'd watch him paint. And it always drive me nuts. You have this beautiful painting, and then he just say, you know what, we're going to throw a big damn tree right here in it. And uh, I always thought he ruined the paintings by doing that. As I got older, I kind of realized that that's just kind of his thing, and he likes it. Well, in my case, I think I've, I get a little heavy-handed with weathering and aging, and I'm okay with that. I kind of like it. Um, you know, these are my models. I paid for them. I build them. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of, I, I do, I over-weather, I know that. I'm okay with that. I don't complain. I'm perfectly happy over weathering. Um, because at the end of the day, I like what it looks like. Okay, we're just going through here. I'm kind of getting these going in here. Now, really, not being perfect when I come through here, and that's okay. Um, Got to make sure I remember to get both sides of this guy. Um, 
you know, I'm actually, uh, tomorrow I will be kind of sort of breaking one of my own rules. And one of my rules is I don't bring uh, models to a table until I've painted them. Um, well, tomorrow I'm going to be playing a game of Age of Sigmar with some friends of mine. And unfortunately, this guy won't be done. I paint pretty quickly. Um, I don't, I'm not a really fast, well, I'm not a really slow painter. I know guys would probably, I, I've seen guys that probably spend hours and weeks and, you know, I could probably get this model done in a day or two, but I just know that I'm not going to have this finished tomorrow, by tomorrow, but I am going to take this out, field it. Um, for those of you that are big players, I will tell you that my uh, death army is not very good yet, but um, if you're watching this video, uh, when this video is published, um, a the new General's Handbook 2 uh, just came out, and I was pretty busy with my 40k models, but I will tell you that I didn't buy any more Age of Sigmar models, because I wanted to see what was going to happen with the General's Handbook 2. And if I'm being honest with you, I'm kind of happy I did that because um, I might change my overall direction of what I'm going to do with this army. I don't know. Um, I'm not entirely sure what, what I'm going to buy next. Um, part of me is thinking maybe I'll use this Coven Throne and do a, a, a Soul Blight army. Get a thousand points of Soul Blight going. What's cool about that is it actually doesn't take a lot of models. Um... And you can get there pretty quickly. Um, that would be fun to paint. Uh, I don't know. Um, my next purchase is probably going to be some zombies. Uh, I want to buy zombies for a couple reasons. Number one, they work as battle line for death. Um, kind of nice to have those. Second reason I'm thinking of buying them is when I first started painting. very first game I painted was Cry Havoc. I think I mentioned that in another video. Second thing I painted, board game that I've got sitting right over there, it's called Last Night on Earth, was the second board game I painted. Um, so I was brand new to painting, and I think I did okay on the zombies. But ever since I have been painting a lot of Warhammer models, I've kind of wondered, hey, I wonder what would happen if I tried to paint zombies again. So admittedly, part of that is for painting. Part of it is because it would make a good addition to my army. Now... Uh, one thing I, I did with my 40k army, um, I'll be the first to admit, I bought a lot of models that I wanted to paint, um, more so than models that worked well on the table. First tournament I went to, I got kind of annihilated, and it wasn't because I didn't have good models, it's because I just didn't have models that had any synergy, they just didn't work well together. Um, and that's okay. I wasn't thinking about 40k from that perspective, I know that some people play it to win. I played it to, uh, you know, playing the game was kind of secondary for me, which you've probably heard me say this before. That's interesting because I wanted to play 40K for a long time. Well, I shouldn't say that. I really wanted to play uh, Warhammer Fantasy because I'm much more into fantasy than science fiction, but that's besides the point. I wanted to play for a long time. I told you last time I was introduced to uh, Mordheim and Blood Bowl and um, Necromunda and things like that. I was interested in that sort of thing, but man, the whole idea of trying to paint after that first time I, I mentioned, uh, when I tried to paint a Mordheim team and I had a blood bowl set and I never painted them. Um, it was just kind of funny thinking about that. You know, the, the thing that kept me away from the game for all those years, uh, is, uh, what brought me back to it now, but I did, I, I, I bought a lot of models. I, I just thought looked cool Admittedly, here with this uh, with the death models that I bought, um, I bought the Skeleton Horde Start Collecting set. And I'll be the first to tell you I wouldn't ever buy that again. Um, painting Arkin was really fun. Uh, I didn't make I wasn't making videos when I painted Arkin, but painting Arkin was really cool. But I have a feeling once I really get a uh, an army going, like once I put a little bit more thought into building that army. That Arkin's a model I'm probably never going to use. Um, if I go Soul Blight, I'll probably end up using this Coven Throne. Uh, 
uh, probably. Can't guarantee it, but I just have this big old feeling that this guy is going to get uh, this guy is going to get a lot more table time than Arkin. Um, it's not because I don't like him. It's just you know there's better ways to spend a lot of points than to use him, and that's okay because he was fun to paint. But I'll tell you, unless you really want Arkin the Black or one of the Mortarks. I don't recommend that start collecting set. There's much better ones out there. Because if you want to play, if you want to play um, Death, I highly recommend the uh, Flesh Eater Quartz. Not to mention that's a really cool one to paint too. But you know, I went in, uh, I went Edge of Sigmar kind of blind. I just said, you know what, uh, I really want that model. And I thought, well, I wanted to paint Arkin anyway, and the price of Arkin is about the same price as the price of that set. Uh, that's the way some of those start collecting sets work. Uh, the Seraphin Army, that's the same way. Uh, the Fire Slayer's army, I mean, a, or the Fire Slayer, the start collecting boxes, you can, man, you can just kill it how, how much, um, you know, hey, I'll buy a start collecting set for the same price as one of those models any day, because that's just more to paint, more to use, and that's cool. I just have a feeling that Arkin's never going to get used. Those, um, my, I, I'm playing tomorrow, I'm not even using my skeletons. Um, skeletons really only work when you have a bunch of them, and really not that into them to want to paint a bunch of them. But that's okay. Um, totally okay. All right. So I'm going to continue doing this. Uh, I'll pause and be right back. Okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> I'm definitely happier with the uh, the lighter color. And we'll probably go add some stuff to that later. Um, you can see those a lot better. Uh, yeah, totally happier. Uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take... Uh, my neutral gray color um, and put it all over those steps. We're going to play around with those and add some color later. For now, I'm just happy. I'm shaking this guy up. And we're going to add a little bit of uh, natural gray. Now, uh, this is a darker, actually, like more of a natural, excuse me, regular gray color as opposed to. Um, the Celestra gray color that I used uh, for all the stuff that we're going to cover over later. So let's go ahead and put some gray on here. And we'll see how this is going to go. So I said, we're going to add uh, non oil over top of all of this. So it'll end up working. I have this gray really thinned down, kind of because. I don't want to lose uh, all those cool things in there. I'd like to eventually just kind of add them. So there we go. Adding this, we're going to make this all gray. That's the right color. I think that's going to work on there. Okay, we're going to put null oil on it. So it's going to end up being uh, darker looking than that. Um, but we'll have null oil in here. Then we're going to probably do a white um, dry brush over top. And color in all these fun uh, designs in here. But I'm not entirely sure how many of those are actually even going to be visible. And I say that because once we get the vampire ladies laying on top, we might not even see them. I don't know. But... Uh, I'll know they're painted, you'll know they're painted, and that, at the end of the day, is really uh, what matters. So, go ahead, paint these. I don't know, I think this is going to be kind of cool. I could be wrong. Um, I've never really totally, I've never had a model come out terrible. I mean, I, I've had some models that I've looked at them and said, man, I wish I, wish I did this, I wish I fixed that, I wish I, you know, but, you know, it's all right. It's a learning process. Um, I'm not trying to be a professional painter. Uh, if I was, I, you know, I, I'd be broke pretty quickly. Um, I'm not all that great at it, but I have fun doing it. You know, like I said, one thing about this, this page, I never, you'll never hear me claim to be a great painter. I'm not. I don't think I'll ever become one. I will, however, continue to really enjoy painting. Something I really like doing. It's uh, been it's been really good for me. 
it's kept me uh, it's kept me pretty happy for a while um, I or at least uh, happier than I used to be you know I used to I think I mentioned this before in a different video but I used to play in a band and um, music was kind of something that was always you know a big deal for me and can't really do that anymore I've got an electronic drum set over there but you all know that's not the real thing I can't I just don't get the same enjoyment or feeling out of it that I do banging on real drums and can't really do that here in the neighborhood so painting it is anyway I'm gonna continue adding grade all these steps and I'll be back to show you what it looks like when I'm done and there we go got some regular gray in there again it doesn't look like much now and it's still drying uh, but none of this model looks like much now because we haven't really added much to it right now we're still kind of at base colors um, but some null oil some uh, white dry brushing some colors in the flowers and stuff I think this will look pretty cool uh, anyway we're gonna stop for now that's some more work on the coven throne see you next time keep on painting